Well, we think we have a, well, a slightly better than 50-50 chance of, of bringing home the Sam Maguire Cup on Sunday evening, please God. Well, now, you're chairman of the Galway County Board and you've been with Galway teams up and down the country for a long time and still Dublin are favourites for this game. Uh, do you think they should be favourites they deserve to be? Well, uh, Dublin are indeed favourites. We recognise that fact quite well and we're quite happy about it because we prefer to be in the role of, of well, the outsiders. And uh, I suppose you can thank for that maybe Dublin's greatest play against, uh, against Down in the semi-final and the fact that the match is being played in Croke Park, which is, well, really home ground for Dublin. Well, do you feel strongly about this playing in Croke Park, now Dublin playing so often in Croke Park and playing all their championship matches this year? Do you think is that an advantage, perhaps an unfair one to them? Well, I suppose it possibly is more of an advantage to them in the Leinster Championships than it is, say, in the semi-finals and in the finals, because well, Croke Park is is the well, it's the All Ireland pitch, and and on All Ireland final day, well, you have people from all the thirty-two counties there, and uh, well, it, it's more of a neutral venue, I suppose, for semi-finals and finals than I'd say it is for Leinster Championship games. That's what we would feel, anyhow. And now, Frank Stockwell, you played against Dublin in Croke Park in the All-Ireland semi-final, that famous final in 1958. 1958 and yeah. that was the one, of course, that Dublin won with a last-minute point from Ollie Freeney from a free. Would you agree with what Father Mahan has said, that it's not really such a great advantage in the All-Ireland series for Dublin? Uh, well, uh, I would agree with Father Mahan, uh, but it, it would be an advantage, though, to them in the Leinster Championships there. But uh, when it comes to All-Ireland final time, it's wide open. Well, now, how does this team compare with the great team of the 50s that you played on? Uh, well, I don't know if it's as good a team, but it might be a better team. Uh -huh. um, it's not as strong a team as the 56 team. What well, do you mean physically strong? Uh, physically, or it's not as big, but it's, um, it's a much faster team. And where do you think the main strength lies? In the present team. Oh, I'd say we're strong in every position, we hope, anyway. Well, what about the forwards? The forwards particularly have taken uh, people's fancy. Uh, they're a very fast forward line, and we're expecting Matty to really get them going on Sunday. Now, do you think that Matty needs to get the ball a good deal at, so that he can distribute it and do more or less a Sean Purcell act on it, if you like, before the forwards can really get moving? Uh, well, of course, it's very important for Matty to get the ball, to open them up. But uh, we're not really depending on Matty to, to make all the openings. Like, I mean, and Pat and uh, Subtle Dunn, Seamus Leiden, the other forwards. I mean, any of them are capable of opening up Sean Cleary. Any of them are capable of opening up a game as they, as they did against Kerry in the last five minutes, as they did against Leitham in the kind of final. Well, the pass that Frank Stockwell was referring to was none other than Pat Donnellan. He knows needs no introduction to anybody at all who saw the match in Croke Park or indeed the Connacht final. Uh, Pat, how about Sunday? How do you feel about it? Oh, we feel quite confident that we can pull it off. We have a good, fast, young team. Well, they're, you trained are hard, they're trained hard for it and we expect to win. Well, you yourself are good and fast and young. How do you get so fit for these games? I train very hard. And that goes for all the team, of course? Uh, that goes for all the team, yes. Well, how's the training been going lately? Uh, it's been going very well. I've trained he very hard for fit as fiddles. Of course, you're on the Dunmore team now, that won the Gal Galway Championship there a little while ago, so you must be at the peak of your... Um... Yeah, I feel I couldn't be any fitter anyway. Yeah. Well, is there any danger now of being overtrained? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so. We've watched that. I mean, if you're eager enough, I don't believe you could possibly be overtrained if you, if you're eager enough, like to go for the ball. I don't think there's such a thing as overtrained, really. Well, I don't think there's any question either about you not being eager <laughs> for the ball, <laughs> having seen you. Um, Mick Reynolds, you're centre field on Sunday, and this is going to be a very vital position for Galway. Do you think they have to win at centre field before they can win the game? We have. To, I don't think so. An even break at midfield could clinch the game for us. I know the forwards, if they get enough of the ball. They'll get the scores. We have very fast forwards in Pat Donnan and James Leiden and Keenan and Cyril Dunn. And I know the backs are very strong. And if we can give, we had sent them, myself and Mick Garrett, if we can give the forwards 50-50% of the ball, we uh, should win the game. Uh, Michael Kelly is here also. And Michael is, is the secretary of the Tomb Stars, was for a long time, he isn't just at the moment, but he was for quite a long time. And Michael, I wonder what you think of this team compared to great Galway teams you've seen for many years past. I think it's the fastest Galway team I've seen for years. I think the forward line is the fastest forward line in the country. And um, as I said before the semi-final, uh, it's a very versatile team. And the men on the sideline have nothing to worry about. Uh, they have several men that can switch around into several different positions. 
and if things are not clicking in any particular place, they have men to fit in, into those places. And um, uh, the centre field uh, has been a topic of conversation, and uh, if they get a 50-50 chance, I think they'll get more than a 50-50 chance. But even if they don't, I think that uh, if the forwards just get, just get enough of chances, that they'll run rings around the Dublin back line. Do you, need, do you think that the Dublin forwards will be clever enough to get past the Galway defence now? Well, uh, I heard John Donlan speaking on television, and his idea is uh, to stick as close as possible, each back to stick as close as possible to the forwards. Well, if they all adopt John's attitude and uh, stick into the Dublin forwards, well, there isn't much they can do about it. Well, would you follow that advice now, even if the Dublin forwards started playing a uh, Pat Donnellan type of game, running all over the place out of position? Would that upset a defence? Yeah, well, uh, I mean, uh, there must be a loose man in order to allow that uh, kind of football to be played. And uh, that was done by Dublin against Down because there was a loose man in centre field getting a lot of loose balls. That won't happen against Galway. Galway are going quite to watch sure. that? I'm quite sure there'll be a man and they'll always have a spare man. Did you see Dublin against Down? I did, yes. And uh, what did you think of the Dublin team? Oh, were they all that good, or was it that down? Um, very impressive, so but uh, I think that uh, they had only, as Mick Reynolds said, they only concentrated, the down fellas only concentrated on uh, one Dublin centre field man, and the other man uh, got away with a lot that he won't get away with against Galway. That's John Timmins. That's right, yes. <laughs> I have great respect for John. I think he's a great, fine footballer, a good, hefty man, heftier than our Michael Reynolds, but... Um, well, all the balls might go between the two of them. You're you not know? going to give him a present of the ball anyway. No. That much is quite sure. Well, now, also here we have Jerry O'Flynn, the chairman of the Galway Association in London, and you needn't guess at all what Jerry came over to Ireland for. You've come over for the All-Ireland, I take it. Well, I come, come over to see them win. And I know they will. Well, what makes you say they're going to win now? Well, I think they have a very good young team. They're very fit and very fast and they're well trained. And what do you think is the strongest part of the team? Well, it's, uh, I think the strongest part is that there are 15 very evenly matched men. And you wouldn't think, pick anyone out in particular? Well, of course, on Mick Gaddis is playing the semi-final. I think he's possibly outstanding. And Pat Donlan, of course, and I won't mention any more names. They're very evenly matched 15. So you expect to be going home to London reasonably satisfied anyway, after Galloway winning the all Ireland. I do indeed. <laughs> and also here is Martin O'Halloran, the vice chairman of the same association in London. Martin has come over. I wonder, Martin, are you as confident that Galloway are going to win? Oh, I think they will. Definitely will win. Oh, I'm, I'm very confident they will win. And is there any reason you have for saying that? Well, uh, they're a good young team from what I've uh, seen and read of them. Uh, I think they have a great chance of winning. Uh, there is one thing I would like to say. I don't know how what happens if... Uh, what will Bobby Beggs? Will he cry or will he cheer? Because Bobby Beggs, in 1934, he played on the Gova team. Oh. 38, rather, and uh, I'm just wondering how he's going to feel tomorrow. When? For all Dublin or be? Yeah. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. <laughs> ah, well, I'm sure he'll know what to do. He's been in both camps. But I think days. Galway are really will win. And that's your final word? That is my final word, yes. Good. Well, I think it's fairly obvious from all we've heard that down here in Chum and in Galway generally, they're not in the least bit worried about the Dublin Challenge. And while they're not saying they're going to win by a lot of points, they still feel that when the final whistle is blown on Sunday, that Galway will be All-Ireland champions for 1963.